welcome back and happy Tuesday. We are coming to you from Madrid, Spain at South Summit, which has been a great tech conference, definitely some FinTech in there. And this we're gonna be talking about ethical AI and the implications within financial services. I have an amazing guest, fresh off of her keynote stage a few minutes ago, um, Clara Durody, who is going to be talking a little bit more about this. She has a book on the subject, so let's just dive in. Clara, thank you for being here. My pleasure, thank you for having me. So what, you've been looking at this a long time, the work at Oxford and more broadly, what, what, is, what is ethical AI, especially within financial services? The best way to define ethical AI is to um, look at what um, this technology actually achieves ultimately um, when it is deployed. So in other way, for instance in financial services, um, how can we use technology, AI, to actually get us closer to our clients and ensure that we, we build a trust-based relationship with our clients. And I'll give you an example. One example would be, for instance, using AI to predict when someone is about to default and instead of waiting for those people to default, actually we can, as a bank, we can write a letter to them to say, just in case, if you encounter some financial difficulties, uh, we're here for you, we can give you a holiday payment if you need one. Do reach out to us. Uh, banks these days actually don't use technology in that kind of, I call ethical, it's, uh, and it's a shame because that is a very good way to uh, shorten the, the, the narrative between banks and, and our customers. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's interesting because this concept, banks always talk about being their first for their customers. Um, but doing that is actually impacting their lives in a way that they haven't been able to do before. Why don't you think there's been a bigger focus on this to this point from a banking perspective? I think we focus too much on uh, the narrative of deploying AI and automation to reduce costs. I think that's any economist and any accountant would tell you. Um, that we can reduce that cost up to a certain point. The moment you go past that, basically you don't have an organization. So there are certain costs which we can't reduce, but there are costs which we can reduce. However, artificial intelligence in financial services is not about reducing costs. It's achieving only one definition, which I have as definition for financial services, is uh, personalization at scale getting our clients so close to us, understanding our clients so well that we actually are able to predict their needs and, and welcome them and give them what they need. And Financial is a good example of, of deploying artificial intelligence for business growth. And uh, I think it was 2017, I sat in one of their um, keynotes, uh, I think it was the, one of the other conferences, in Europe, and they said that their phenomenal growth has been achieved only through personalization at scale. That is fascinating. I mean, I think it, it's so interesting because I have a lot of conversations with banks, and um, both being on the banking side for a long time and now as, as clients, and oftentimes it's exactly what you said. Usually they're looking at AI. They try to talk about personalization through things like chatbots, but the reality is that's not gotten very far. And then the second thing is all about reducing costs. So I love the idea about personalization at scale. So as you were embarking and writing your book around kind of decoding AI and financial services, what are some of the things that surprise you the most? The, the book is based on, on a deep research, primarily face-to-face um, -face interviews with executives. There are about 180 people I, I talk to, primarily board of directors, decision makers. So um, I think I think one of the, the, the things which I've seen so misunderstood by our industry and decision makers is that deploying this technology is a joined up exercise, not a patchwork, lowest hanging fruit, let's try to see what works, small steps, and we'll figure it out later on. But as long as we do something about AI, then we're great. So what I've seen is time and again is that there is no joined up strategy for reinvention of businesses with artificial intelligence. I think, I think it's a missing point, um, which we can uh, perhaps discuss further on, on a different location. So the first thing which I found uh, part of the, re the research in my book was that decision makers don't understand 
how this technology actually can deliver. Yep. Uh, the second point is that uh, they are yet to understand the value of reinventing their business models, their revenue models and operating models. I think operating models, people are, are working out, yeah, we can do things differently. But when it comes to revenue models, I think banks are missing out a big point, which is they need to become the custodian, the trusted custodians of their customers' data. And by that I mean it's just exactly as they're trusted custodians of people's money, they need to become the trusted custodians of people's uh, data. Uh, my book has um, identified one of the very interesting uh, points is that customers sooner or later will expect to receive a data statement from their banks exactly as they receive a bank statement which states how much money you've got and what happened to your money, right? So in the same way, customers will expect um, a data statement to tell us um, what happened to our data. How many times was it sold? Who wanted it? Um, yeah, who gained money on it? So I think the more we wake up to realize the value of our personal data, I think the more banks should expect a, a, a clear demand from their customers to provide this kind of data statement. So, so uh, there are so many, so many incredible pieces that we can take out of this. Um, so thank you so much. For the rest of you, as always, please click on the link below. You will have a full background on Clara. She'll talk to you a little bit more about this in depth. And uh, we have a long way to go. Very rarely do I use a World Trail Trailblazer. Clara is certainly that. So let's see. Let's see what happens. Until next week.